Good afternoon, everyone, both in the auditorium and online. It's really a great pleasure to be here. I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to share our work here at this symposium. I have always been highly, deeply passionate in science and innovation, and I've always also greatly enjoyed working with people and creating as a team. And I'm really glad to be able to do this in the research team at Illumina. And and also to drive towards a mission that I believe in. So in Illumina, our work is to design and develop sequencing tools. And the mission of the company is to unlock the power of the genome to improve human health. So how exactly do we do this? So what can we learn by reading DNA sequences? So we, uh, one, one, one key area is in oncology. We are able to uh, look at cancer, cancer genetics, uh, detect cancer earlier, hopefully. And we have also been able to enable non-invasive prenatal testing. We are also, through DNA sequencing, we are also able to understand and diagnose rare diseases, which are not that rare. And, and there are also a lot of applied fields, such as agriculture, that uses uh, DNA sequencing. But actually, what has been most impactful in the, in the recent pandemic, in the current pandemic, is that we've been able to use sequencing tools to detect and monitor the COVID-19 uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. Beyond a yes-no answer, uh, beyond a positive detection of SARS-CoV-2, it is absolutely critical for us to be able to detect the mutations. We've already learned and read about the variants of the virus, the UK variant, the South Africa variant, and the different variants that are popping up in various parts of the US. And it's critical that we continue to monitor these mutations, uh, study its global transmission, and this will help to guide public health decisions. It is also important for us to continue to learn about how fast the virus is mutating, and hopefully this will help enable us to continue our vaccine development as well as therapeutic development. Through sequencing, we are also able to monitor co-infections and uncover host immune responses. And actually, the key important part is also we really need to be developing a biological surveillance so that we can continue to monitor new pathogenics species and really be ready as a species for the next outbreak. So a bit about the company. So Illumina started as a startup in uh, 1998 and through our innovations in DNA sequencing technology grew to a company of 7,800. Many may not know that we have a substantial presence in Singapore in this little red dot. So we hire 1,300 employees in Singapore uh, working across the, the areas of research, product development and manufacturing. We actually manufacture all the desktop sequences in Singapore. So uh, one, one uh, point to note uh, was also the first COVID-19 virus that was sequenced in China back in January 2020 was done, was sequenced on the Illumina mini sig instrument that was made here, right here in Singapore, Woodlands. So we, we continuously try to drive the innovations out of our country and through the company. And, and through the years, we've been launching various Illumina platforms, and each of these platforms are actually steeped in innovations, and I'm going to tell you more about them. And it is, it is through these innovations where we have been able to drive down the cost of sequencing. So the cost of sequencing over the years came down so fast that it broke the most law in computers. So when hu the human genome was first sequenced back in 2003, it cost $3 billion to sequence the first human genome. And when Illumina launched the first next-gen sequencer, the genome analyzer, we brought the cost down to $20 million. And when we launched the HiSeq 2000, that drove down the cost further to $20,000. When we launched the HiSeq X, we brought that cost further down to a price of $1,000 for one human genome. And with the launch in 2017 for, with the NovaSeq, we, we broke the $1,000 barrier and uh, now a human genome can be sequenced at the price point of a few hundred dollars. So what exactly are these innovations that allowed us to drive down the cost of sequencing? So actually, in order for us to read every single base of DNA, it really is about multiple disciplines coming together, working together. So I'm going to speak about some of these disciplines. So we need material science and nanofabrication that 
that drove our um, advances in the flow cell going from a random flow cell to pattern flow cells through innovations in the chemistry. We went from four channel detection to two channel to eventually a single channel detection that allowed our, enabled our CMOS based detection. And then through protein engineering, we were able to develop enzymes actually made really big leaps in enzyme engineering in order for us to in increase the speed at which we can sequence. So we also have um, a lot of advances in the optics, advanced fluidics, and of course bioinformatics and data interpretation. And I'm going to dive in into a, a, few of these, uh, uh, a few of these areas. And firstly, on flow cells. I'm a chemist by training, working in the material science research team. The flow cells actually went through a lot of advances through the years. We, in the first few sequences that we launched, we were sequencing on these random flow cells, non patterned So you can see the DNA clusters um, uh, at, at random positions in various sizes. So it is with the high seq X where we started the pattern flow cells. So the beauty of the pattern array is that it gives us a precise control of cluster size as well as the spacing. So then this allows us to be able to pack and sequence and get more data out of a, out of a specific surface area. So we can get more sequencing reads and actually we are also able to enable faster reads because now we, because now we know the exact position of where the cluster should be. The flow cells chemistry actually went through a lot of advance. At the start, um, back in the genome analyzer, we actually shipped our flow cells in liquid buffers. So as we improve the hydrogel polymer on the flow cell, we are now able to stabilize the polymer and we can now ship our flow cells actually in ambient temperature and dry. In addition to the, the, the flow cell chemistry, we are also improving on our manufacturing pr practices. So we started the technology of pattern flow cells with the traditional lithography, which is very expensive. And over the years, um, when, at, when we went to the NovaSig platform, we launched the NovaSig with an uh, in-print manufacturing. So in-print manufacturing is much faster, cheaper, and this allowed us to drive the price of the sequencing further down. So as with a lot of uh, uh, scientific Scientific advances. When we change uh, one part of the of the of the technology, other parts actually need to be changed too. So when we change the imprint, uh, change the imprint technology, the resin needed needed to be changed. The polymer on top had, was different, and then the hydrogels were redeveloped, and the clustering chemistry was new too. So this uh, this was a lot of uh, different factors coming in together, and at, at Illumina collaboration really is a day to day uh, activity. So in this latest instrument, which is the Nexic 2000, that we launched just in 2020, we, were, we actually broke the diffraction limit. So what this means is that every of these sequences that's uh, on the desktop, size of like a laser printer, is actually a super resolution microscope. So, so with this, by going to super resolution, we are now able to pattern the wells, uh, we are able to pattern smaller wells, pattern them closer together, and with this we can pack more data, get more output for the users. And we also went to uh, sequence at shorter wavelengths, so we are now at the blue and green uh, chemistry and, and now our research team in Singapore is really glad to be have contributed to a few of these technologies in re, uh, reagent chemistry. So, so what we have been really so we have been driving down the cost of sequencing the genome, but what we have really enabled is the accessibility. So with the price of uh, sequencing per genome coming down, the number of genomes sequenced went up dramatically. So now researchers, clinicians are able to sequence more, and, through, and by doing that, we are able to make more discoveries. But actually, we are just at the start of the genomics revolution. Less than 1% of human variants are fully characterized, so I would encourage a lot more work in this because there's so much opportunity and discoveries to be made. So this is my second last slide and actually at Illumina we look a lot at the innovation uh, process and we monitor our, uh, we, we focus a lot on innovations and our inventors and here are some numbers uh, from the company. So we, we have uh, on average about 130 inventors uh, employees named inventors every year at Illumina. And we are very glad that in Singapore, the research team has been contributing a lot uh, to this, to this, uh, to the inventorship as well, as well as the uh, inventions. 
we among this 130, um, only 24% are female inventors. And actually, this is already twice the, the percentage of the US um, uh, percentages. I the US percentage is at 12.8% female inventorship. I don't have the Singapore numbers, but would be really glad to fi find them, figure them out. And as you can see, there is a lot to be done to encourage female inventors. So I just want to end off with this uh, thought that the world is a diverse place. We need diverse innovators. So go forth and innovate. Thank you.